throughout the past four years, we've had our eyes on a buck we call Southpaw. And this week, we shared a final chapter in that story. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconix, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Blood Sport Arrows, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Caldwell Shooting Supplies, Books, Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non-Typical Clothing, Howes Lubricator, Genesis No-Till Drill, Yamaha, Fourth Arrow, Scent Crusher, iScope, Mossy Oak Properties of the Heartland, Code Blue, Decode, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. As a three-year-old, Southpaw caught our attention. We named Southpaw because he had more points on his left side than his right and it reminded us of a left-handed pitcher. During the summer months, Southpaw seemed to run with the bachelor group on the northern end of the proving grounds with the buck we called Handy. The next year as a four-year-old, Southpaw was even more impressive and was on our hit list. During 2015, Southpaw visited several of the food plots on the northern portion of the proving grounds but we knew this through trail cameras. We never had a personal encounter. During the following summer, Southpaw's now five-year-old, Southpaw and Handy followed the same pattern. Spent it in summer in food plots in the northern portion of the proving grounds, and Handy separated out during the late summer to the southern portion of the proving grounds. While Handy would make this rain shift, Southpaw would remain in the same area. We had several Reconnex pictures and videos where it seemed Southpaw was pushing Handy away from trophy rock sites. We believed that Southpaw's dominance was why Handy would shift his range in the late summer and fall to the middle and southern portions of the proving grounds. At five and a half, Southpaw's a thick antlered Ozark Mountain legend and we were putting a lot of effort into chasing him, we just couldn't find him during daylight hours. As a five and a half year old, we started getting trail camera pictures of Southpaw a little bit further south in food plots we call Crabapple, Heidi Ho 1, 2, and 3. And we noticed this rain shift, but didn't know what to make of it. During the late winter and early spring, we got two more pieces to the Southpaw puzzle. Our spring intern that year, Jessica Wheatley, and Tracy and Tracy's dog Crystal were shed hunting in a food plot we call Crabapple when they found one of Southpaw's sheds. This was not surprising as Crabapple was our largest food plot at the time and had the most food that winter. Several weeks later, while conducting a prescribed fire, very close to our office, like 200 yards away, we found the other Southpaw shed. Based on all this information, and that Southpaw seemed to be moving a bit more during daylight, going into 2017, he was at the top of our hit list. During the summer of 2017, we shared we put up a 15-foot tall redneck overlooking a power line right in the core of South Paul's range. Through the years, we'd had several pictures of South Paul in this general area, but it's so steep and so hilly and thick bedding areas all around, it's just not a favorable place to bow hunt South Paul. But we thought we could hunt that power line and catch him crossing from bedding area to food or vice versa during rifle season. Our plan for South Paul during 2017 was hunt this redneck during rifle season or food plots on top of ridges in his area 
during the late season. With our summer work completed and the season was nearing, I had my first encounter with Southpaw. One afternoon before archery season, I spotted Southpaw feeding in a food plot I could see from my house. This encounter gave me even more confidence. This was the year we tagged Southpaw. Let me know when. One on the left. 37 yard oh, nice. My daughter Ray spent a lot of time hunting this year with a crossbow and helped us tag several does. You nailed her. You nailed her perfect. In October, Ray and Tyler were hunting a small food plot we called Gobbler Knob when they had a cool encounter. Just at dark, a large bodied buck stepped out. It was Southpaw. Finally, one of our hunters saw Southpaw during daylight hours. Southpaw never offered Ray a good shot, but that encounter lit a fire in Ray. Throughout Missouri's firearms use season, Ray saw several good bucks, but not Southpaw. She got to watch a lot of neat behavior, but never pulled the trigger. Ray felt there was still a lot of season left and was following her own self-imposed guidelines to harvest a mature buck, preferably Southpaw. Missouri's farm season falls right during the prime of breeding season, so bucks aren't on a pattern. They're either bedded or locked up with the doe or seeking the next doe. Ray even missed a little school during farm season, don't tell anybody, put a big effort into it, but season closed with no southpaw. After farm season, our trail cameras hadn't captured any pictures of Southpaw, and we were curious if he survived the season. Finally, Southpaw showed up in Northfield, one of our food plots, in the morning, two days in a row. We call that a great pattern here in mountain country. With the southeast wind forecast, Daniel and I decided to hunt out of a redneck in Northfield and see if Southpaw would keep the pattern. Just as soon as there was enough light to kind of see around, Daniel spotted a large body deer at the end of the plot. Southpaw, back out. It was Southpaw. Unfortunately, Southpaw never offered a shot but we thought if we were patient, hunted the food sources on the right winds, we'd have another encounter with Southpaw. We didn't see Southpaw in any of our trail camera pictures for quite a while, but we felt confident given the drought and the cold temperatures, he was using food sources in the area. A week later, Daniel and Tyler were hunting a food plot two ridges to the south of Northfield we call Big Cave. During that afternoon hunt, they encountered several bucks and one of them was Southpaw. Yeah, that's Southpaw. Are you kidding me? We always seemed to be about a day behind or just out of range. We just couldn't close the gap with Southpaw. We get looking, we're like, man, that, that buck's a little bigger. That buck's a little bigger. And it was South Pole. Wow. Cold weather hit the proven grounds right as Missouri's alternative weapon season or muzzleloader season opened during late December. With temperatures in the low teens, bucks needed to forage a lot to regain body weight from the rut and generate enough body heat to survive the temperatures. When we checked cards after Christmas, Southpaw had been back in the north field 
and we were all set to take Ray hunting, chasing Southpaw once again. So Clay and Ray headed back to that redneck blind in Northfield. Once settled in the blind, they were confident deer would come from the south or southwest from a bedding area up to the forage to feed. It was a matter of waiting and see who showed. They hadn't been in the blind long when they saw antlers just over the ridge. Oh, that's a nice one. As several bucks popped out of the cover, they noticed one was significantly larger. It was Southpaw. Okay, Southpaw is the big one. Yeah. Okay, so the one on the far right. Okay, the one stepping out. It's just a little one. Yeah, so Southpaw is the one in the middle, yeah. Yep. The group of bucks fed into the field, but it was obvious something had them on edge. They're running back. They hadn't been in the plot long when they trotted back in the cover. common for this late in the season for deer to be on edge, especially here at the Proven Grounds, because they've been hunted hard for months and hungry predators are constantly cruising looking for a meal. Not long after, they spotted more deer working toward the plot. There comes a buck coming up the oh, back. Yeah. That's a good, oh yeah, that's a good deer, right? Yeah, that's a nice deer. He's been all over your east. Though. Yeah, I think we should go ahead and shoot him. No, just let him come in. He'll come okay. In. As long as all these other deer are here. Up on them, okay, Mom. Let's see, that's a nice one, too, I think. Yeah, no. Buck after buck filed into the plot. One's a nice wide eight that has a limp. He's easy to identify. And Ray wasn't sure if Southpaw would return, and she was considering tagging that buck. There's another deer back food plot. Another small one. Oh, that's an interesting ride right there. Do you think I should go ahead and shoot this one when he turns? And that deer behind him needs to move too. What do you think? Wait or shoot? There's a, I mean, oh, there's a southpaw coming up. Okay, just okay. wait, just wait, just wait. Just because if he starts spooking. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to put my headphones on. Okay. Really slow because there's other bugs watching. Yeah. Just wait till late, because they're so close 
I'm just gonna find it on my scope. Okay, he's the big one in the middle with his head down, yeah. No, that's the, he's right behind that front one you're looking at, that limpy one. The one with his head up. Okay, I see him. Him. All right, so he's behind the limpy one, yeah. Yep. Okay. deer fed slowly closer to the blind, but there was never a clear shot at South Hall. Okay, okay. Wait, there's that deer. That deer's blind. I'm just waiting. Take it. Alright, how about now? You good? Are you good? Uh, no. Take it. Come on, just a little bit more. I think the other deer's bottom. Uh, no, he's just eating. Wait, now he's just going to sit down. Yeah, he's just eating. Both Ray and Clay's heart sank when the deer cleared the field a second time. I don't know what... It wasn't me, it wasn't you. No, no. They might come back. Oh. We had so many bugs in the field. Light was fading quickly, but there was still hope the bucks may return because they had no idea why the deer were spooking and leaving the field. Amazingly, a few minutes later, deer returned to the plot and not far behind was Southpaw. 
The deer slowly fed and moved closer to the blind, and Ray and Clay were just waiting for Southball to present a wait, shot. A deer Dang it. Wait, wait. Okay, if you can shoot him, you can I shoot can. him. I can, he's straight on. You can shoot him straight on. I can shoot him yeah. straight on. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Wait, 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 deer Dang blind him. Wait. As Southball finally separated from the group, Ray prepared for the shot. No way I missed that. Did I miss it? I don't know. I thought I had it right on it. Based on Southpaw's reaction, Clay and Ray had a tough time telling if the shot connected. He didn't drop in the field. I didn't like really see anything after he ran out because, you know, smoke from the gun and whatnot. So I have no idea how I could have missed. I, I'm pretty sure that I got him, so. I was visiting Pops. And as soon as I got the call from Ray, I hurried on home because I wanted to be part of the recovery. Ray and Clay knew exactly where Southpaw was standing because of videoing and seeing the vegetation in the field. So after everything settled down, they quietly got out of blind and went and searched for hair or blood where Southpaw was standing. Not finding any, they wisely decided to return to the office and watch the video on a larger monitor for more hints. Yeah. I'd be breathing that hard. Is, that is my breathing technique. I'd be breathing hard too <laughs> if I saw all that coming out. Man, that's a pile of antlers right there. I'll tell you what, there's even more before that. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm sitting here shaking. I wasn't even there. I just see it. something happened right there. Yeah, I saw that. I saw it. Even on the larger monitor, I couldn't see any sign of impact. I just wasn't sure. I watched a buck run out of field, I rewatched it, but one saving grace, he ran right by a white rock, a distinct rock, which is tough to get because we have so many rocks on his way out. And I was confident we could go to that rock, pick up blood, and find the trail. Even with knowing exactly where the buck was standing and where he ran, we couldn't find any sign of hair or blood or Southpaw. I want to do everything possible to recover Southpaw, so we backed out, called the local game warden to get permission to take Crystal. Crystal's our dog that's mature and well-trained in recovering deer. You've seen her recover several deer for us. In Missouri, you have to have permission from the conservation department to use a dog on a leash to recover deer. Permission was granted, and we went back out, full of confidence Crystal was going to take us to Southpaw if the shot connected. Clay worked the leash, Ray and I started searching the hill, and we started searching and searching. Crystal was a little excited at first because there had been a bunch of deer standing there, but it wasn't the normal take your water skiing, I'm on the trail reaction. We searched the hillside, we searched right, we searched left, we brought Crystal back to the white rock and where Southpaw was standing, but she never gave us that tug that told us she was on the trail. We walked all the trails below the white rock. Sometime during the night, I called off the search. 
I know, as most viewers of Growing Deer know, Ray's a great shot. She's tagged a bunch of deer with a crossbow and rifle. Many of y'all know, Ray's been a national champion or placed in national championships on the Branson Trap Team. No doubt about it, Ray's a great shot. In this case, I had to assume there was a case of buck fever. We just couldn't find any sign that she'd hit southpaw. Because if the bullet is, I mean, you weren't way off, so it's either right here or right here. A few days later, while the guys were working on the ranch, I got a very emotional phone call. They had found Southpaw within a hundred yards of where he exited the field. In fact, Clay and Crystal had walked within mere yards where Southpaw expired. For those of y'all that hunt mountain country, you understand this. You can be within feet of a deer but it literally be 10 feet below you or above you behind a rock bluff or behind a stump or in tall grass. We simply missed him. There was no sign and our body search simply didn't pick him up. I'm not a very emotional person, but at that phone call, I had very mixed emotions. I was so joyful that Ray had made a good shot. The entry was right where she was aiming. I was so sad that we did not recover him that night. I never want to waste venison, and I never want to not recover any deer, let alone a deer like Southpaw. In hindsight, we learned several lessons. It was extremely cold that night, and the humidity was abnormally low. There was little chance Crystal was going to pick up the trail. We thought we made every effort that night, but in hindsight, we should have went back the next day and made another body search. Just because there's no blood, even on a large bullet like a 50 caliber muzzleloader, doesn't mean the deer's not hit. Frontal shots have proven effective by several hunters, but I prefer a broadside or quarter and away shot that gives you a much better chance of a blood trail. Ray had a personal goal of tagging hit list buck this year, and I'm extremely proud of her. She hunted during warm days, she hunted cold days, she hunted on days when her friends were calling her to go do other activities, so she chose to hunt. Ray had discipline, she stuck to it, and she met her goal. It was a huge privilege to watch Southpaw mature and the lessons he taught us. He's a buck that's going on our wall with great pride, and we hope another buck will thrill us just as much next year. I hope you join us during the rest of 2018 as we continue our habitat improvement work learn and share new strategies and techniques, chase some turkeys, chase some hogs, and ultimately get back to deer hunting this fall. If you wish to learn more about our habitat improvement techniques and hunting strategies, please subscribe to the Growing Deer channel. During all these activities, I hope you'll join me in slowing down and enjoying creation, and most importantly, taking time every day to be quiet and listening to what the Creator says to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.